Welcome back to the Lovelands, and I want to thank you for joining us again. Um, if you enjoyed uh, the program last time, which was about two weeks ago, um, please let us know. We are doing everything in our ability to bring you the best um, message and the most encouragement and um, bring you the truth and bring you the light of Jesus Christ. And we just, I want to greet you in the love of the Lord, and I want to just give you a Christmas blessing. We are celebrating here and all over the world the Christmas season, but you know, when you have Jesus in your heart, you have him, there's Christmas every day in your heart. Um, so just wanted to give you a Christmas greeting and in the love of Christ, and we love you. And we thank you for tuning in. So we're going to open up uh, today's uh, program again, continuing with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I just wanted to really share my heart. The Spirit of the Lord just gave me this message um, a few weeks ago. And he's just really made an impression to explain and expound the reason uh, why this program is called The Love Lens. He had given me the name uh, because he really wants us to see one another in the love of God. And he wants us to be operating in that love. Did you know that in the, fir the first book of first Corinth in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 13, he's speaking to Christians, and he's speaking and he's wanting to get the church, to be in operation in the full manifestation of the Holy Spirit and in the full gifts. He's saying he wants them to be in perfection. And the only way we can do that, it's not going to be by the works. It's not even by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's by the love of God. And we have to get to that place. We have to be, we have to yield ourselves to the love of God. And if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, enter your heart you can do that now you can say Lord I believe with all my heart that you died on the cross and paid for all my sins and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and you receive him into your heart if you say those words or, or something like it the Bible says that if you even call upon the name of the Lord you shall be saved when you say Lord he's there to save you and a new creature you have become. I mean, so he doesn't complicate the, the matter. Maybe in other, in other uh, beliefs or, or other uh, religions, maybe they say that this is the way to do it. You must die for, your, for what you believe in. And Jesus saying, no, you must live. I will do the dying. So he became the ultimate sacrifice. He died on the cross, paid for all your sins, so you didn't have to do the dying. He did it for you. He became the sacrificial lamb, a, a, a lamb without spot or wrinkle. And we can all say that we have spots in our lives, that we're not perfect. But he's come to make us perfect in his love. And anything that is not of love is not of God, not of the one true God. I'm just going to go into um, back, picking up where we left off at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm going to give you the meaning, also the meaning of uh, the word Satan in the book of, uh, in Greek. But I'm going to continue on with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it says, uh, verse 11, it says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, when I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror, and this is the actual true meaning of um, the name of the program, which is called the Love Lens. This is where he gave it to me. It's through a mirror. It's through a, either we look through a mirror dimly when we're not perfected in love, or we're looking through the lens of love, which is the eyes of God himself. How did he accept us? Why, why would the most high God, you know, the, even the angels asked him, 
What is man? That you are so mindful of him. The angels asked God, What is man? That you are so mindful of him. So I'm going to tell you, if someone else is lying to you and telling you that you have to die for the sake of your God, that's wrong. That's not the one true God. It's a, it's a facade. I, I, like I said, shared in the previous program, I don't want all this time and all this effort and all this, you know, maybe of my good, the bestowing of my goods to be done in part or only get part uh, results out of it. And actually, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, you are nothing if you do this without love. Even as Christians, if we give all our riches and give it to the poor, but we have not love, we profit nothing. We can even, you know, it says right here, and though I bestow all my goods, verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Well, and that, I, I don't even, and this is, this is talking to people that had gone a wrong idea and a wrong perception of what it was to serve the one true God. Many of them came with different ideas because of their environment. Uh, back in uh, over two, in 2,000 years ago when the gospel had come, there was such a uh, paganistic way of thinking. And if you're thinking, and, and so many people thought they actually would offer themselves up for the pagan gods. They would become sacrifices. And they thought, well, that's all deception. That has nothing to do with God. Nothing. There was a, a twisting. There was a, 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 a warping of that love. And here in the book of, uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Apostle Paul is clarifying to the Christians not to fall into that not to fall into that way of thinking that first and foremost this is what love is love suffers long it's, su it's long suffering it's not touchy it doesn't go up to somebody and say oh, because you don't believe the way I do I'm going to shoot you no that's not the love of God love suffers long and it's kind it's not kind behind a mask because I don't want to be found out or I have to have you to like me so I can take advantage of you. That's not kindness. That's being deceitful. And that doesn't come anywhere from God Almighty. So love suffers long, love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puff up, puffed up. It's not conceited. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. God is love. And wherever the love element is not evident then who is who is evident what else is working there well in the book of revelation um it's talking about satan um and we're going to go there real quick revelations chapter 2 Revelations chapter 2, verse 12, and it says, And to the angel of the church in Pergamum, 
right these things these things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword I know your works and where you dwell where Satan's throne is and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells and he's talking about dying those that have died as martyrs that wasn't God's plan he talks about who was the author of that it was Satan he says even where Satan's throne is and who was killed among you where Satan dwells well in the Greek translation and the Greek word and the Greek meaning of the word Satan in that particular verse is the word Shatana and the word Shatana is translated in three different meanings has has three different meanings to the name Shatana which is the Greek word for Satan it's referred to as an accuser, a slanderer, and hate. Wherever there is hate, wherever there is slander, false accusations, and wherever there's slander, someone who is just slandering your name through false accusations, there, when you see those three in full operation in any denomination in any church in any religion you see Satan himself it's not God not the one true God so there has to be a choice made you have to choose whom you will serve this day. Will it be the world, the God of this world, which is Satan, or will it be Jesus, the author and the giver of life? I'm going to give you another example, um, but before I go to that example, I want to finish up 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it says, and verse 12 where it says for now we see in a mirror dimly going back to the the name of this program uh, for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face you know people are out there dying or choosing to die so they can see and they have an eternity they're promised an eternity of wealth and riches and very many other things but did you know that you cannot see him face to face unless you have the love of God inside of you? It's seen right here. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see him face to face. Did you know that you can see the Lord Jesus Christ? You can see God Almighty face to face here now through the love of God, through the lens of love. You can do that. All you have to do is receive him. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. There's nothing you have to do besides giving him all your brokenness, pride, and see what he will not do in your life. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall no, just as I am also no. Do you know how beautiful that is? To have someone know you for who you really are and love you and accept you. Where there is fear, faith cannot be. And where there is faith, fear cannot tolerate. So you have to make the choice 
who you're going to serve today. The Bible says, while it is called today, today is the day of salvation. Today is your day. Today is an opportunity to have him. You know, we're, we're, it's Christmas time. He was born to live and then live to die. That once and for all, for one and for all, salvation has been made available. No longer is there required the blood or the, the blood of sacrifices of animals, no longer, much less of, of human beings. Just once and for all, it was done for you and me just to believe and to receive. You don't have to go out there and prove anything to anybody. He's already proved it to you by his love, by the shedding of his blood that was the remission of all sins. It was the final payment. He is our high priest who stands and is making intercession for us every day. Every day. So he's making intercession for you. He's praying for you today. And I'm here to tell you he loves you. I'm here to tell you he's come to save you from whatever situation you're in. He will keep you and he will save you from whatever circumstance and whatever concerns you. He will take care of it because he is a provider. He's faithful. And you will never find that in anybody but he is the one true God who will never leave you nor forsake you and so it goes on to say for now we see in a mirror dimly I have to just repeat this because this is the this is where the birthing of this this the name of this program came from for now we see in a mirror dimly that's when we're in part but then face to face, when is then? That word then is when perfection has come, when the love ha has come. There's so much that happens in just the word then, then, because it's a transition of part to perfection. Then something happened. Then is when the great, the baby came. Then, so you talk about all the, 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 the pre, event but then the finale came and that's what that word then then face to face we will see him now I know in part now why is it now now in that when you're in that condition of operating in the gifts of the spirit maybe you have a gift of of um, of knowledge but if you have not love you're nothing you know nothing. You profit nothing. You may have all the knowledge. Maybe you have may have world knowledge. Maybe you may have historical knowledge of, of the ancient times. But if you have not love, you have nothing. And you will never see him face to face. So all those efforts will come to naught. You come to zero. And he's saying... I came to give you life and life more abundantly. And we will go there in John chapter 10, 10, what Satan does and what God came to do. He says, now I know in part, but then, then, when is then? When love has been perfected in our hearts, when we choose to yield to that love as a born again believer that we can tap on any time as a born again believer. If you never accepted Jesus, accept him now. Say, I want this love. Say, Lord, take my life. Show me this love. And there he is right there. Just going to surround you. You know why? I can tell you 
that this love is real because I, it's even tangible even right now as I'm talking to you. It's so real, it's right there with you right now, just like it is for me right here. There is no time and there is no distance in the love of God. When you're hearing this, this was spoken days ago, but in all honesty, in the spirit and in the love of God, it was spoken from the beginning of this world. And it's going out to you right now, and you're receiving it right now, just for this moment, which doesn't end. Because if you receive him, that love will continue on from generation to generation. And maybe even if you choose not to have children, Maybe it's just the other people you will come in contact with that will see that love and you'll be able to contaminate them. And it's not really a contamination. Contamination usually is, is a word that's used in a bad or in a negative way. But it's a revelation. And it's the fire of God that's being shed abroad that is is kindling in the hearts of man it's kindling in your heart right now that love and you can go and share that fire and that love of God that you've experienced that is so real he will speak to you he will make himself known to you and it says but then I shall know just as I am also known, to know, to have someone know you. You know your spouse can't even know you. You know so many times you feel like you need to go and get a wife or go and get a husband so they, you can have someone that knows you. No one will ever know you like God, like the one that died and gave himself up for you. Verse 13, and it says, now abide, and now, now, Abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The greatest. The greatest of these is love. So what I want you to walk away on this Christmas day in your life, receive the perfect gift. Receive the love of God. But even greater than the love of God, receive God himself, which is love. We're going to go to uh, John chapter 10 and verse 10. In closing, I just wanted to share what you receive when you, re when you ask the Lord to become Savior and Master of your life. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief. There's a thief. The thief. Well, actually, let's go ahead and start at verse 7. John chapter 10, verse 7, it begins to talk about Jesus, the good shepherd. So Jesus is good. He's love. He's your Savior. It's a sacrificial lamb that came and died for you instead of you having to die for your sins or to become accepted. And it says in verse 7, John chapter 10, verse 7, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Will you decide to be a sheep today? I am the door, Jesus is saying. If anyone enters in by me, do you know you cannot enter into salvation or enter into eternity unless it's through Jesus Christ? No other way. There is no other way. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not 
come except to steal, kill, and destroy. That's a thief. You can choose today whether you will be a thief or you will be a sheep and take the good shepherd as your leading, as your door, to be your provider, because he gives you good pasture. And it says, I have, I, Jesus, have come that they may have life, not death, that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly, not just life. Okay, you don't have to die for the sake of your cause, but then, if that wasn't enough, he said, I come to give you life. He said, but you can have it in abundance. That's a good God. That's a God of love. The, the thief only comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and hell is never satisfied. Never. So it doesn't just end with you. It steals from everyone around you. Your parents, your children, it steals from everyone. Now in the name of Jesus, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that your life not be a zero. That your life means something. Not through your death, but by the death that Jesus paid on the cross. He paid for it. He died so he can live. And guess what? On the third day, after he died on the cross and became the sacrifice, the final payment for all our sins, he rose again. So let Jesus become your present this Christmas season. He's been all wrapped up, waiting for someone to come and open him and open his love. He's waiting for you just like he was waiting for me to come to him. Maybe you're a prodigal and you've gone away. Maybe you heard of the Lord Jesus Christ when you were a young child. and Someone came to you, reaching out to you, and wanted to share the love of Jesus and tell you that there's life in him. And you believed it. But then hate came in. Satan came in with his accusations and hatred and sowed the seed of hate in your heart. But Jesus is calling you back like the prodigal son. With open arms, he's waiting for you to enter in. So open him up today. Open your heart to him. And open the most beautiful present in all eternity and you will ever see is him it's Jesus I want to thank you and I pray I'm excited for the next year God is going to do some awesome things if you want to hear from us please um, there is a uh, you can make contact through the way TV put in your prayer request they have an online contact information. I also have uh, some uh, social media that you can uh, like or, or have some form of contact. And uh, we will go ahead and post it on, on the screen. And I just want to wish you and give you the best Christmas greeting ever. Jesus Christ himself, the perfect gift, the perfect Lamb of God, has come to give you life and put love in your heart. I want to thank you.